Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar on 999 training solutions for the emergency services and wider public sector. Throughout this webinar, you will be provided with details of how the DPS will function, how to bid for the agreement, and the benefits you will receive by becoming a supplier to IPO. Before we begin with the webinar, I would just like to run through a few introductions. I am Sarah Earl, Category Buyer for the Emergency Services and Blue Light here at YPO. And with me, I also have Laura Megston, Assistant Category Buyer for the Emergency Services, and Catriona Thackeray, Contracts Officer. I'm just going to go through some housekeeping. You have all joined this webinar in the listening mode only. However, you do have access to type questions throughout this webinar. I will go through some of the questions at the end, and if I don't, I will create a Q&A document and share it with everyone this afternoon. So today we are going to cover the background of the DPS, give you an overview of what is included within the new DPS, features and benefits, and any best practice that we can share with you at this stage of the process. I will now hand you over to Laura, who will introduce you to YPO. So for those of you who aren't overly familiar with YPO, I'll just give you a quick overview. YPO was established 45 years ago and are 100% publicly owned by 13 local authorities. Because we're publicly owned, this means all our profits go back into, our, into the public sector, delivering better value for money. We offer a wide range of products, which are stored and distributed nationwide from our two warehouses in West Yorkshire, and offer a wide range of frameworks, training being one of them. Now that's why IPO as a whole, so we'll give you some background information on our category. Okay, so the emergency services category has been putting in place dedicated emergency services frameworks for over 20 years. This was brought about initially by a number of fire and rescue customers who didn't want to utilise other options that was available in the market at the time. We are completely customer driven and have worked closely with our customers to ensure we have a wide framework offering that is tailored to meet all of their needs and requirements. As well as police and fire and rescue customers, we also partner with other central governing bodies such as the Home Office, the Maritime Coast Guard Agency, the Environment Agency and the Civil Nuclear Constabulary, just to mention a few. I'll start with some general information about the Training Solutions Agreement. Four years ago, we was approached by a number of fire rescue customers asking YPO to put in place a compliant route to market in the form of a framework that would provide various training solutions aimed at firefighters. We decided to then open this up to the wider public sector by creating one national framework suitable for any type of contracting authority. We have decided to change a new agreement to a dynamic purchasing system, also known as a DPS. And Kat, our contracts officer, will explain the DPS in more detail further into the webinar. The agreement period will be for two years, with the option to extend for an additional two years. Customers who are able to use the agreement are the emergency services and blue light, local authorities, housing associations, health organisations and charities, and all other central governing bodies. So as you can see on this screen, a timeline of events has been provided. We are currently on target to achieve these deadlines. However, as we know, problems can arise throughout these processes. So please bear this in mind if there are, if there are any minor delays. Here is a non-exhaustive category list that we, we, that we will be putting it out into the market. We have worked closely with our stakeholders to put this together to ensure all training elements are covered. Provided, providers will be asked to bid against the categories that their organisation is able to provide training for. At further competition stage, customers will write a specification based on their exact requirements against the lot specific to their needs. Suppliers, will, suppliers awarded onto that particular lot will then be invited to bid for the bespoke opportunity. I will now hand you over to Kat and will give you further information around the DPS. Thanks Sarah. So yeah, I guess the question really is, what is a DPS? So a DPS, also known as a dynamic purchasing system, is a solution in which allows providers to be added to the establishment agreement throughout the lifetime of the solution. So with the framework agreement, it's sort of a closed tender, you bid, you get on board or you don't, whereas with the DPS, you can be added at a later stage. The only way to be added on is if you are passing the selection questionnaire on the mandatory stage. A DPS does not have time limits as a framework agreement does, therefore it can actually exceed the four year period in which a framework does. 
So I guess another question really is why DPS? What are the benefits for you as a provider? Well, firstly, it's more accessible for SMEs. As every provider that passes the SQ and mandatory stage, they are definitely awarded onto the establishment agreement. Whereas in a framework, maybe only one or two providers are chosen. The DPS remains open to new bids throughout the lifetime of the agreement. So this allows you as a provider to choose when the right time is for you to bid. This could be due to other workloads, maybe after you've read the specification, realising that you need to gain a certain certification, or even that actually you start engaging with the customer, recognise that they need a compliant route to market, and think that the DPS is probably the best way around it for them. Another positive for a DPS would be that actually, if you do bid, and unfortunately you are unsuccessful in your application, you can get feedback from YPO where you went wrong and then you are able to bid again on another round. So they're just some of the quick benefits that are for being a DPS. So we're now going to go on to the portal side of things and I'm just going to show you how you can navigate the portal, how you can find opportunities and how you can bid. So once you come onto the pro contract portal, this is the screen that you will see. So if you are not already on the portal, here you will just register free with pro contract um, and they will get back to you within a few days. I already have a login, so I'm just going to click the login here. So fortunately it's kept me logged in, so you don't have to watch me login again. <laughs> um, so now I'm just going to show you um, how to find sort of a DPS on the system. So this is the home page when you've logged in um, and here across the top right hand side you're going to ensure that the drop down is on all opportunities and then you will search with a keyword. So I'm going to find a DPS that we have out at the moment. Please be aware that this is not going to be the training DPS as obviously this is not out yet. So just another thing to mention that actually when you do search on the portal, YPO don't own Proactis, so you are going to find tender opportunities that, that are from any public sector buying organisation that do obviously advertise on June North. So here you're going to find the opportunities that you're looking for. So I can see here, this is the one I'm looking for, the YPO Grounds Maintenance Services DPS. So once I click on that, it'll pull me through to this screen. It's just going to give me some details. It's going to show me key dates, things like that. Um, so to actually get through to the document, read the specification, the terms and conditions and everything like that, you will need to express an interest. So you're just going to click here on the green illuminated button and hopefully it should do it pretty quick, but as we know, technology is not always the quickest. Um, and then you will automatically be accepted for your expression of interest. So what we're now going to do is we're going to close this off and if you want you to go straight through to the documents, have a look at them, um, that's absolutely fine. You can click no, show me the event now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the beginning and show you how to find, find the documents again. Because obviously you might not fill them all in at once and you might come back to it and this wouldn't be how you would find the documents. So I'm going to say yes, I'm sure I don't want to go through to it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the home page. Oh, sorry, it's logged me out. Just give me one second. Technology. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Just give me a second. There we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're going to come back onto the homepage and it's going to look like this. So because we've already expressed an interest into the opportunity, um, you will actually be able to find um, the documents under activities. So you're going to come here, ensure that active is checked. You're going to go to the drop down here and select YPO. Next to it, you'll just select keyword. So again, I'm just going to put in 881 because I know that is the opportunity that I'm looking for and simply click go. So here it's going to bring up a list of anything that's under YPO and includes sort of the keywords that I search. So in the event of this time, it has just brought me the opportunity I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on it in the blue illuminated area. 
And then here I can see that my expression of interest has been accepted. So that's absolutely fine. That means we can go straight through to the documents uh, and start looking at those. So we're going to come here and we're going to go start. So just one thing to point out, when the DPS has first been published, you will be looking at round one. Now, this DPS is, is into its third round now. So don't worry about that. All that means is how many rounds into the DPS it's got a unit to. So I'm just going to click start here. So Hey, so as I mentioned earlier, DPSs don't have to be in the same time limits as frameworks and they can actually be a lot longer. So for example, the one that we're looking at today is actually a total of, well, I think it's seven years um, fully. So we've still got six years remaining. Here we can see obviously a bit more description about the services, any contacts that we might need. Um, and then here is the bit about messaging and clarification. We'll come back to that in a bit. So down the right hand side again, we've just got a bit of a checklist area. Now this is helpful because you can't submit your bid until all of these are checked green. Um, so when we just go through this, I'm just going to give some handy hints and tricks um, as to what providers do normally miss um, when they are trying to bid. So obviously here you can see where the question sets are uh, and you can see that we've got the selection questionnaires here and the mandatory requirements. So before you can actually get into those questions, you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom of your checklist and click start my response. It's not going to let you answer the questions until you have clicked that. So, a bit confusing because the page looks pretty much exactly the same, apart from now we've got a little bit of a progress bar. So, with the progress bar being there, it means that once you've gone in and answered some questions, it will show you your percentage of completeness. So, I'm just going to quickly come in to the standard selection questionnaire now. So, to get in there and start responding to questions, you're going to come to your action and edit. So now it pulls through the question sets. So as you all know, the selection questionnaire is pretty standard. It's set by CCS. There's not really anything in there um, different to what you'd normally see. Um, so you'd literally come in um, and you'll be able to see if there's a paper clip next to anything. It means that there's an attachment against the question. Um, it's red when you've not responded. But as you can see here with the key, it shows you sort of what it means. So when it turns green, you have responded. So I guess you're just going to come in here and um, put your responses in there and then once you've done that you're going to come back so it's going to be the same sort of set out for all of the question sets um, so again you'll just go into manage requirements edit answer the questions needed um, and then that's that again like i said with the paper clips that's where you will find documents attached that's where you'll get your pricing schedules your specifications your terms and conditions um, and everything like that so if you are actually going through um your documents and you think that you're actually sort of getting ready to complete and to submit um, as i mentioned earlier obviously you've got the area here with your checklist now, one of the main things that providers struggle with is this bit here, the complete the additional information section because it's a little bit catchy out. So that section is here, the additional information. It will not let you submit your response until you've completed this. And it is literally as simple as you need to come in here, click edit. You can leave this blank, blank, blank. And what you need to do is you need to come here, click that, that you have confirmed that you've read and understood obviously you are quite you are more than entitled to put in obviously wording here and um, it's not needed you just need to agree to this statement here and once you've saved that you're going to come down and then you'll be able to see that this has become green um, and then obviously i've not completed the question set so therefore i'm not going to be able to submit um, but once I have these two become green and then I will literally click submit my response. So just going a little bit back, back one step, um, we will go back and I will show you the messaging and clarification area, which I mentioned earlier. 
So if you find that once you are on the opportunity that you have any questions, any queries um, that you actually want to ask the buying team, um, this must be done through the portal. Please do not email these questions in um, because there's a dedicated area on the portal here for this. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and um, view all and then similar to writing an email, you are going to create a new message um, it's going to come towards the project team, which is the buying team, put in a subject like an email, um, and then obviously your body, your, your clarification, any attachments you might have, and then you're going to send your message. Um, now, this goes through to the buying team, and they will respond to you as soon as possible. Um, please ensure to read the clarification deadline in the documents, because once that time has passed, no clarifications um, will be responded to. Um, so yeah, that's really the portal in a nutshell. Um, the contracts team here at YPO, we are always on hand if you do have any queries or questions with the portal. Um, but yeah, that, that's sort of it really, and I'm, I'm going to pass you back to Sarah. If you can. Okay, so just to um, conclude the webinar, I've just listed a, um, a list of benefits um, to being a provider that you've received from being part of this agreement. Um, a national DPS opens up opportunities to work with customers based throughout the UK, this giving suppliers maximum exposure to our entire customer base. A DPS allows the agreement to be SME local provider friendly, and this works in line with customer policies, who all include social value as part of, of their tender process. That's going to be nothing that you haven't seen before. The, customer, the further competition functionality allows for innovation throughout the life of the agreement. There's no exact services have been specified, leaving this open to the customer to state their requirements, which gives suppliers more opportunities as there are no limits to the type of services that we are looking for, which allows for innovation, as, as I've just stated. We market all of our frameworks to our wide customer base through various channels, um, such as social media and direct communications, just to name a few. And full support will be provided to suppliers through various channels, such as tender debriefs, marketing support, and assistance wherever required. So that's the end of the webinar. If you've got any questions, our details are on there. Um, if there's any questions come through, we can answer them at a later date because we're running out of time. Um, but yeah, so thank you for listening to our webinar and hope it's been useful. <laughs> thank you.